How's it going guys, this is XA298, I am back with a second video, and uh, I plan to do these weekly. First of all, thank you guys so much for supporting the very first video, the first Friday's recap. And I got a lot of likes and subscribers, and we broke 1200 on YouTube actually, which is quite an achievement. So, first of all, I appreciate every single bit of that uh, to help me get to this milestone. So yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video as well. Uh, yeah, let's get started. Oh, wait, that was supposed to be snap, and really snap, that's kind of embarrassing. Alright, so our topic of the day is to attack, and uh, that seems quite a broad topic actually. I saw a lot of this in the game re records, so there seems to be a lot of attaching closely to the opponent, and I thought that it might not be the best approach or method to uh, producing maximal impact. And sometimes, actually, you want to step back a little bit, and that's really important, especially if you're double digit Q uh, wanting to get to the next level in terms of attacking. Yeah, basically the point is to kind of maintain proper distance, and sometimes that could work out even better. Our first example is a game submitted by Solaire Plays Piano 19Q versus another 13Q player on OGS. And we can see that there are plenty of examples in this game. For instance, uh, Black just played a K3 in the very beginning, and White decided to jump in, and this is a very early and aggressive move. However, it might not work out in the best interest, because White has just jumped into a really strong Black area, and this is kind of like involving yourself in a pincer. So one of Black's really good strategies is to actually just defend the corner and let White run out. So simply this will be good enough because uh, while white is trying to look for his two eyes in the center, black already has the side uh, and he has the corner which is pretty big already in the game. So even though in this case black did not approach very tightly, it's still a very powerful move. In the game though, we see that black attaching very closely, uh, just hitting white head on at O3, 3 and sometimes it might not work out the best way, and in this case, uh, White can still escape to the center, but if we compare this position to the position we just talked about, White actually has more in the future. So uh, White playing at P2 with Sente, and if Black blocks, then White also has other things like R6, or just simply the uh, invasion at R3. So that all could cause headaches. So if you compare this shape to the one we just talked about, then yeah, you can see the difference. Another example in this game was when White played at d6. Now this is once again an overplay because White has too many weak groups to handle at the point simply. So what Black had to do was to just stay clear of the White Stone but also try to attack it. Which sounds a little bit complex but if Black just plays here, uh, pokes through the Elephant Eye, then it's not like he has direct contact with the White Stone but it might be even more powerful because White is now split into two groups, uh, namely the triangle group and the group with squares. So as you can see, this is very difficult for White to handle because, like we said in the last episode, once this happens, White will have to sacrifice one of them. In the game though, Black attached closely again. Now this could hurt Black uh, in return because in the game, White played at C5 and Black had to cut. Now White can Atari. And uh, if black extends, then white connects. So all this works out for white because uh, black is still hurt at d8. As you can see, uh, he could have avoided it too uh, had he not played a close attachment. So sometimes you might just want to keep the distance a little bit and it could reduce unnecessary damage done to your own stones. Our last example of the day is at move 72 when white jumps out at f13. Now as we can see that black is in danger, he has a weak group on the bottom and it's not easy to capture this F13 group currently running out to the center. However, black still has moves to play and one of the good candidates, I think, is D15 because it separates white in a very nice and solid way while not directly contacting white. So now if white tries to enclose this gap, black could take extreme measures such as the attachment at F15 to try to cut white. However, in the game, black attached closely once again, and uh, E13 actually helped white a little bit. As you can see, white in the game just extended at F14. 
and that was very helpful because now if Black tries to stand, White can jump. So all that exchange at E13 and at 14 did nothing other than trying to help White. So sometimes attachments can also be unnecessary in a way such that it improves the opponent's shape, and that might be why you want to avoid it. As we can see later on in the game, Black failed to capitalize on a few chances to attack White, so he lost this game. However, uh, like we just discussed, if he had rethought about those close attachments and chosen otherwise, maybe we would have a different favorite for this game. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Leave a like and subscribe if you did. I will be going away for the Cosmo Open, which is pretty exciting. Uh, you guys can tell me what you want me to cover, and I will try to do it. I'll try my best. So, uh, see you guys then.